Close up, Mexico City is set to reopen on June 24th, almost three months after closing down many public areas, including restaurant, dining rooms, gyms, churches, and parks. While this date approaches, deaths continue to rise and hospitals saturated. The question here is, is it too soon? Will there be a rise in deaths or is it important to open now to save the economy from other collapse? With us today is former Secretary of the Economy under Enrique Peña Nieto, Ildefonso Guajado, Secretary Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you're having fun uh, in the show. Uh, <laughs> Secretary, I got, my first question to you is that we had a lot of trouble translating your, your role and your title. Are you a secretary or a minister? Does it make a difference? Like, what's the difference between the two? I'm a member of secretaries, but I'm a former secretary. The difference with the U.S. protocol is that once you are a governor, you'll be always be called governor or ambassador or, or secretary. In the case of Mexico, you have to say former secretary. And today I make my living out of a consulting firm as everybody that has served in government for a long time. But uh, fortunately, it has been a very successful 19, 2019, not very, very, very lucrative 2020. Now I'm giving a lot of conference that I don't charge for it. Or a maestro, you, you get to be called that? maestro for life, but we don't do that in the US, right? You're not Master Dan. Um, so <laughs> I think that they should change that. You should be a secretary for life, right? <laughs> it was enough to be for six years and have to deal with your president two years. Right, absolutely. So let's get into some things. Um, the New York Times reported last week uh, that about the, the lack of a stimulus package here in Mexico. Uh, the president uh, has gone against uh, what most uh, economists in the world have decided to do to pump money into the economy. And what the New York Times said is that the president had some kind of trauma uh, after the 1995 tequila uh, uh, thing and that he decided that if he does uh, inject money into the economy, the uh, rich people will get all the money and the poor people will not. Is that a, a true thing? Does that make sense? No, no. I think that uh, this uh, misunderstanding, it, it comes from the financial uh, issue called uh, Proa, where uh, the, the banking system had to be rescued and a lot of uh, borrowers went away without uh, paying their debts in order to, to save the banking system. This intervention can be done directly to save jobs. You don't have to save businessmen. You, you have to save jobs. And you have a lot of ways to do it directly. You can compensate to firms for the amount of employment they maintain, or you can, you can do an unemployment insurance for workers that have been contributing to the social security system for the last four years. And you can do directly benefit small firms and directly benefit uh, the working class that is directly linked to the manufacturing, to the export of manufacturing, the manufacturing sector. So there are ways to do an intervention that goes directly to save jobs. Absolutely. Uh, it, it seems like that a lot of people are suffering and there's not a lot of money getting into the regular people and there's going to be a lot of unemployment. Do you feel like there could be a collapse in this economy uh, in the next couple of years because of this? There are immediate consequences that we are already uh, confronting. Uh, you, you hear the statistics of INEGI, where there is an estimate of 10 million uh, jobs lost in the informal and the informal economy. And, and that has direct uh, impact on the everyday living of, of, of every Mexican family. Now, that's exactly why you have, you have to open the economy. But you have to open the economy uh, trying to follow very specific criteria to contain uh, the transmission of the virus. You have very good examples at the international level. You have the difference of the evolution of the virus in Tokyo vis-a-vis -vis New York City. There are different magnitudes of population. The fact that Japanese had for a long time used, uh, 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 obviously, the cubrebocas, and that they have uh, definitely different habits in, in, in terms of showing friendship and, and, and emotions, it has helped Tokyo to have a very slow uh, evolution or increase in the pandemic vis-a-vis -vis what happened in New York City and New York State. So if we have had use over time, 
mostly in trying to teach people how to coexist with COVID in a safe environmental labor uh, area and how to, to conduct your social life and family life, uh, giving them the elements that are required with uh, enough transportation system to avoid crowding uh, in order to, to facilitate uh, uh, cleaning elements, like even basic water in some areas of the city, it will have a much more deeper impact. Today, most Mexican families cannot afford the lock, the lock in in, in the way it has been instrumented for the last two and a half or three months. Right, uh, but do you think that's possible? Um, as we know that there's an incredible distrust of the government, a distrust of the media, and the, the president seems- Are you talking about your country or my country? No, well, I'm talking about all over, right? <laughs> and, and, I, and I, But I think specifically that people aren't really believing uh, that this is really big until you see it. and. Uh, what seems like it's been happening that if your leadership doesn't really make an urgency on this, then it's hard to get people to believe that. Is that happening here? And do you think that this is something that can be overcome or do we take on this no pasa nada approach uh, continuously until we have herd mentality and that, that we know that we can be, uh, I guess, uh, immune to it with a number of people getting it? Well, Dan, you live in, in Mexico City and, and, and you have the first evidence that when death strikes around you, you learn the lessons. There are areas in Mexico City that has been blown out by this pandemic. Ixtapalapa, some, some areas in the city. Has it happened in your country? These viruses it really has a very deep effect in, 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 in sectors of society that are highly vulnerable. And so there are many areas in Mexico City where people are witnessing what is happening around them. It is not as easy as at the beginning saying that nothing happens. Today, people are, are really going through the experience of losing loved ones and going through the experience of being hospitalized, and therefore there is an impact in their behavior. But we have to keep that experience in other areas of Mexico that the virus has not really made a tremendous impact like uh, some rural areas, some other cities in the country where, where, where this has, has not spread as, uh, as deeply. But we have to start teaching people how to, to, to cope with this challenge and how to learn how to coexist with coronavirus. Okay, uh, we're running out of time. I'd love to spend more time with you. I have one more question. You're running for the uh, governorship of Nuevo Leon. Uh, you know, you're very lauded by, and, and people have very high opinions of you from uh, the last administration, but your party doesn't have uh, as much uh, excitement. Uh, how, how do you overcome that and win the governorship? Well, first of all, we are not still yet at the time of, uh, of running for election. Uh, electoral law is very specific, but yes, I have made it very clearly publicly that I'm trying to get the nomination of my party to contend in that election. Now, uh, society has a very, very, very critical view of the party system in Mexico. I think in general, we have not met the expectations of people. And therefore, there is a sentiment that is asking from us a deep change in how to be sensible to what we need in Mexico. Now, through this crisis, this feeling is even deeper. And the, and, and, and the challenges we're going to have like, are much bigger. And I think that what it requires is a new view of politics, new commitments. And I think that just like in your country, people is, I think, is going to learn the value of expertise and how to face things in a serious perspective. Improvisation, demagoguery, or, 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 or traditional polit populist politics will not longer uh, be the solution to what people need. And I hope that politics is going to take a new level, new level, and actors are going to be scrutinized about their own records and their own personal uh, experience. And therefore, I think that uh, that now we are going to be looking more into candidates and into, into parties. Okay, former secretary, thank you so much for being on the show. We really enjoyed having you here, and good luck. Thank you, and congratulations for your program. It's quite a nice mix 
uh, reporting from Mexico City to, to an audience that uh, is learning about uh, things in Mexico. Congratulations. It's a good show. Thank you very much. Appreciate having you.